My name is Zerar Khan. I'm the writer and director of In Flames. Uh, In Flames is a story about a mother and daughter who are fighting the ghosts of their past so they can exist in the present. Um, it's a love story. It's a horror. It's a family drama. Um, and it, uh, it says everything that I want to say about Karachi. I think if you love a place, you're critical of it. And it comes from a place of love. Um, because that's, you know, and the French are so good at that as well. And I think cinema, for me, and what I wanted to do with this film, with In Flames, is speak to the condition of women in the country because that's more than 50% of the world and speak to and also create a film that can in some ways be ammunition for those who are living in Pakistan who are living under a society with very rigid expectations of behavior and ideally give hope know that there is a future where you will overcome these demons, where you don't have to move away to survive. You can survive in this place and speak to the resilience and the power of the women, the incredible women I know who, who are doing the work to create a more secure and inclusive society. And that's what I think cinema's art, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna change legislation but it can change minds, and that's what I hope to do with this film. Um, I think growing up between Pakistan and Canada, you know, you're always an outsider somewhere, and so I have a very particular experience of being an outsider, um, of someone who's does not have a fixed space in society, and that allows me to have insight into what the character of Mariam um, could be experiencing. And then I, you know, my process is a long one. We've been developing this film for six years, and in that process, I've gotten really close with these actresses. They've shared their stories with me, they've shared their experiences with me, and I also grew up in Pakistan. So I saw women like Mariam, girls falling in love for the first time. And it should be this beautiful thing, but instead it's terrifying. Because, you know, they're so scared of getting caught, of what could happen if my family finds out, you know, what would the consequences of that be? So it was coming from listening and hearing the stories of Ramisha, of Bakhtawar, of the many incredible women who have surrounded me my whole life and, you know, and exploring that through that lens um, and from my own experiences of growing up between two places and always kind of being on the outside looking in. I mean, I resonate more with Mariam, <laughs> but I feel like the male characters in this film are a reflection of the society. And so they're not villains. Asid feels like it's his job to protect Mariam, and he shouldn't. She can protect herself, and we see that through the course of the film. Um, and the little brother, he could do so much more, but he's not, because he feels like he doesn't need to, as a, even as a young man. You know, so both of those characters I think they're a reflection of the way that patriarchy kind of is insidious. I, I wouldn't say even Salim, the rickshaw driver, you know, the first time we meet him, he's, uh, you could, he could be interpreted as a savior, you know? But what I want to show with this film is you have to save yourself, you know? And there are no saviors. And I mean, I feel empathy because if you're growing up in a society, you don't know what is wrong with it, you know, because you take for granted a lot of the social norms. And so for characters like Salim or Asad, they feel like they're doing the right thing. Even for the character of the uncle, 
he feels like he's doing the right thing. He's protecting Bukhtaur. He's protecting Fariha from the judicial system. You know, so it's by putting the camera and the lens on them and reflecting it back to the audience, we can see that this is nefarious. This is malevolent. This is horror. Uh, Ramisha is like, I, I would only say she's gifted. You know, this is her first film. We, the first time we met was when she came for her script reading with the entire cast. And when she walked in the room, I didn't recognize her because we'd only met via Zoom. And in person, she has this very quiet presence. But in front of the camera, something transforms. And uh, I, you know, I think it's so rare to be in the presence of that. And I'm so happy that she decided to be in this film. My process of working with her is I don't have like a one size fits all approach to working with actors. I, you know, I, I ask them what works for you. Um, do you want to come for a more academic? Do you want a more practical? How can we, I feel like the job of the director is to bring out the best possible performance for the actor in the way that they understand and the way that they can, um, in the capacity that they have for performance. So with Ramisha, it was really having a conversation about um, the character, about where the character is in that scene, about what the emotional beat is of the scene, what is the core of the scene, and then letting her interpret that as she would. And her interpretations were just always spot on. You know, um, so for a director, um, it made my job so easy. You know, like I didn't feel like I had to pull the performance because she knew what to do with it. She knew where to go and when to be restrained. Because for me, a lot of the character of Mariam is in the nuances. Um, it's in the things that are not said. It's in the quiet moments. And she had such a deep, deep understanding of that. And she's so young, you know, like for her to have that at her age, I'm so excited to see where her career goes. With In <laughs> Flames, it's not only Ramisha's first film, it's her first time on camera. She's never done any shorts. This is her first time working in this medium. And for her to have these instincts, it, yeah, it was a, like a brilliant collaboration. Uh, I was born in Karachi. I've spent most of my 30 years, 32 years in that city. It's a city that I have complex and deep emotions with. Feels like a difficult relationship. And, you know, uh, the, I, we were doing the post-production in Toronto. Um, and it was in the middle of Christmas break. So the city was in a blanket of snow. There was no one there. We would do it at nighttime. And I would go into the cinema and we would play this movie on the big screen. And that sequence where she's on the motorcycle and she's going towards the beach and then she walks out and you can, you can almost smell the Arabian Sea coming towards you. And I wanted, for a moment, I was like, I am in Karachi, you know, that is where I am. And I, I wanted to show the beauty of the city as well as, you know, the terror, but, real, but those things go hand in hand because with Mariam, you know, she is so much a part of that city and She's not defined by the terror. She um, is resilient like the city. And, you know, it's a hard place. It creates hard people. But I think you're better for it. And in terms of the visual landscape, we were working with a female DP. Her name is Ur Egil Nurbulatova. She came from Kazakhstan. Um, it was her first time in South Asia, not just Pakistan, in that region. And I remember when we finished the film, she was like, I, she was telling me the way you had described it as dusty and, you know, dirty, but there's beauty in the shards of glass, there's beauty in that dusky sunset. I now understand what you were trying to say. And I'm so happy we could bring her in because I feel like her lens, you know, because it's really the DP who's capturing these visuals, it's not the director. And her eyesight and her way of seeing the city is the exact same way as mine is. Um, and 
I'm so happy that, you know, Karachi hasn't been showcased cinematically. There's only a handful of films that, and this is one of, this is the fifth largest city in the world, you know, and we don't have a cinematic language for that city. I'm so happy that I'm able to now carry this film and show this film as this is where I'm from. This is why you should go there. This is what's wrong with it, but this is also what's so beautiful about it and unique about it. Um, there's a few different elements to what ultimately brought me to genre, to you know, having these fantastic elements. One is, for me, people always ask, who do you make cinema for? You know, I make it for myself. It's a huge, amazing to share it with the audience, but it's always unexpected when you're sitting there and they're all watching it together. And the films that I enjoy watching, especially lately, are these new genre films. You know, stories by uh, Maddie Diop, Atlantics, uh, you know, Julia Dickerno Raw, uh, Jordan Peele, um, Nope. It's interesting to see what's happening with genre today because it's storytellers who maybe 25 years ago would not have had the privilege and the benefit of being able to tell these stories. So we're seeing something new happen where genre is evolving and, you know, we're seeing this mismatch, which is why I cannot call In Flames a straight genre film because we we steal from many different places. And that's also what excites me about, you know, I feel like for cinema to stay relevant, it needs to be innovative. And I feel like genre is right now a space that is so incredibly exciting because of what's happening today. That's not to say that, you know, filmmakers like Satyajit Ray, what he was doing and telling urban and feminist and stories about people in marginalized groups in his time was incredible, and I feel like that, for me, was the, the time of drama, you know, when, when drama was doing something that we hadn't seen before. And I feel like that shifted a bit now. Um, and then with this film, this was also a revolt in its own way to a certain type of cinema that comes out of my region a lot, where it is steeped in tragedy, and it is steeped in characters suffering, and then the film, ending, the film ends on that suffering. And we walk away thinking, oh, these poor people in this poor country. I could not make that movie. I needed to make a movie where the characters in this poor country overcome their demons. They survive, they keep living there, they see another day, they know that there's a future. Because that's the reality. Um, that's what needs to be told, and that was one of the things that drew me to the horror genre in addition to the very real horror of what it is like to have the experience of womanhood in its aspects and its beauty in Pakistan. Um, so yeah, those were kind of all together coming to why we ended up going down this route of In Flames. There is something happening right now. You know, there is, uh, there's excitement, there's interest, there's uh, the tools are more accessible than ever. And I think that's done a big shift in allowing there to be more storytellers. Because, you know, for so long, a camera was so expensive, so it was only a few privileged elite who could make movies. But now everyone's making movies. And now because of social media, we have access and understanding of what a festival like Cannes is, you know, what it means to be here, because before we, we wouldn't have known. Um, my concern, I hope there's something happening, but there's been moments like this in the past where we've had a few films that have been transformative, and then there's, it's so hard to make that second film. And there's been a decade of nothing after doing that eight-year climb of making your first film. And then how do we, you know, we don't have a film, we don't have a National Film Institute. It was disbanded in the 80s under the then military dictator. Um, so everything that's happening is happening through the blood, sweat, and tears of artists. And I know that's not sustainable. So the question for, you know, artists like myself, artists like my producer, Adam, is how do we create a sustainable industry without infrastructure? How do we help continue for there to be growth? Um, so I'm hopeful, I stay hopeful, but I'm worried. <laughs> it, 
it means it's a dream. I'm still processing it to be here at Director's Fortnight presenting the film when, you know, The Blood of Hussein is a film. I remember watching it and thinking the way that he captured it, he also uses genre elements. And I met Jamil 10 years ago, you know, and it was as a student going in because he was teaching at, uh, at a college where my friend was also uh, an assistant professor. And he's like, you have to come and meet Jamil. And I'm like, I will come and meet Jamil. <laughs> um, and he was so generous at the time because um, I'd seen his films. And he was part of that initial wave in the 70s, you know, when it felt like something was happening. Our films were uh, in the international space, you know, they were at Director's Fortnight. Director's Fortnight was the first festival to recognize Pakistani cinema. It was the first, it was the first people to bring out a, a film and show it to the world and say, this is what is happening in this country. It is not just one thing. And that film especially, it showed that. It showed different facets of the society. So for In Flames to carry on that legacy, um, it's such an honor and such a privilege and so surreal that I think I'll really understand it later today when the movie screens. Right now, it's still, it's still not real to me.